Uh, okay, uh, hello everyone. So I'm Andras Kovac and this is a, going to be a talk about stitched compilation with two-level type theory. So what is stitched compilation? It is about writing code generating code with good ergonomics and safety guarantees. And uh, there are many examples for the ex existing infrastructure like this. We have type template Haskell or just template Haskell. We have C++ templates, we have traits, macros, and generics in Rust. And in all of these cases, there is a separation between what is the, the compile time language and what is the, the runtime language. And in all of these cases, I think there are also points to improve ergonomics and safety guarantees as well. So part of this talk is about how can we do better than these systems in certain ways. And what are the motivation for using staged compilation? So one motivation is low cost abstraction. And here I am saying low cost instead of zero cost, because usually there is a bit of an overhead in terms of code size when we are using staged compilation. However, I think in, in many situations it is well worth to get a moderate increase in code size, but also get like a large increase in performance. And I really like, uh, like the usual abstractions developed in typed functional programming. Uh, and I would also like to uh, make the cost of these abstractions lower. And there are also domain specific languages. And this is also quite important because I think like most of the large performance gains come from domain specific insights. And uh, it is not really feasible to have a general purpose optimization in some compiler which knows about all of these insights. So really we have to make it possible for programmers to teach compilers about all of these domain specific optimizations. And, and also there's inlining and fusion with strong guarantees. So this is more like a personal motivation for me because I have worked a lot at the writing high performance Haskell code. And it's a bit frustrating there that we have quite a, like a fragile infrastructure for inlining and for fusion optimizations. So if you use instead staged compilation, it's much more natural to develop infrastructure where we really have strong formal guarantees. For example, that fusion always happens and goes through. Okay, so what is two-level type theory? So this comes from homotopy type theory. Uh, first, the idea was developed by Wojewodzki and then by Annakov, Capriotti, Krauss, and Settler. And the motivation was to do metaprogramming and kind of a modular treatment of axioms for homotopy type theory. But interestingly, uh, here, uh, do we have a laser? Oh, okay. So the title says applications, but stage compilation is not mentioned at all. All of the applications are in homotopy theory and category theory. But interestingly, it turns out that the system is quite directly applicable to, to stage compilation. So I think this is a, a good example for like a cross pollination of very distant fields. And uh, okay, so what are the features? So there's an integration of a compile time language and the runtime language. And there's also a guarantee of well typing of code output and also a guarantee of well staging. And by well staging, I mean that in the, in the generated code, there are no metaprogramming features anymore, which, are, which live in the, in the meta stage. And it also supports a wide range of runtime and meta languages. So here we can make a choice. So we can make the two languages very similar, but we can also choose to make them different. And there are certain trade-offs and advantages uh, here. Okay, and we can also have dependent types, both in the meta language and the object language. And this is actually what I choose to develop in this paper, so this setting and also support efficient staging by evaluation. So this is analogous to normalization by evaluation in the sense that we are evaluating a staged program into a semantic domain, and then we are extracting the code output from this semantic domain. Okay, so this talk mostly contains small programming examples. Uh, for tutorial and larger examples, you can see the artifact. So there is an implementation of this, and all of the examples can be written with moderately different syntax. Uh, than in this talk. And for the formal details, you can see the paper. Okay, so let's look at the basic rules. So we have two universes closed under whatever type formants, formers we would like to have. And U0 is the universe of runtime types. So if you have something in U0, then it can appear in the code output. It's a runtime type. If you have 
some type in U1, then it cannot appear in the output of staging because it, it has to live only in the, in the compile time language and during staging, it has to disappear at some point. It has to be computed away. Okay, and likewise, if you have an inhabitant of some compile time type, then that inhabitant value also cannot appear in the staging output. Okay, and all type firmers and all eliminators stay within the same universe. So at this point, there is no way to cross between universes at all. The only way to cross between these two universes is by specific staging operations. So one operation is lifting. So if you have a runtime type, you have the lift of A, this up arrow A, and it means it's like the type of meta programs generating uh, code with type A. So the lift of A in other systems, it could be called a code of A or an exp of A. So if you know some template has call or some meta ML or meta or canal is sometimes called. So instead of the up arrow, we say code or exp. Okay, so we have quoting. If you have any runtime value, any runtime expression, you can quote it and then it's just a meta program which immediately, immediately returns that expression. And we also have splicing. So if you have some meta program which generates expressions, if you splice it, then uh, it essentially means that during staging, this meta program will be executed and then the code results will be inserted in the, into the output. And we also have these two definitional equalities. So quoting and splicing are definitional isomorphism. And this is important if you want to do polymorphic and dependent inside programming, because programs will be only well timed up to these these rules. Okay, and then informally staging means we are running all meta programs in splices and then insert the results in the code output. Okay, so let's look at small examples. Uh, so we can just do inline definitions. In this case, the program consists of just two top level definitions, and we have a meta level definition of two, which is just the quotation of a sac zero of a sac zero. Uh, sorry, of a sac, sac zero, sac zero, zero, zero. Uh, but here, this just means that not zero is the runtime type of natural numbers. And I'm just doing these zero subscripts to distinguish the runtime and the meta level versions of the, exactly the same type formers. So here, the definition is just a quoted expression. And when uh, I'm defining the function in the runtime language, I can just use a splice of two. And then when I do the staging, then only the object level bindings remain. So in this case, I only have F and I perform the splicing. Okay, let's look at the compile time identity function. So this ID is just an ordinary polymorphic identity function, but here I'm using a notation like Agda for a pi type. So if I have any type in U1, this is just a polymorphic identity. But because I have staging operations, I can use, uh, use these functions in object level code. So in runtime code as well. So here, this is the identity function for Booleans, but I'm doing the splicing and I'm calling to this meta level identity function and I have to pass a type and then I have to pass an expression. And the type that I pass is just the lift of bool zero. So because this is the type, then I can pass a quotation of an expression as the next argument. And in the output, I just get the, the identity function. And I can also write an alternative identity function, which is a bit more interesting, because now I say that I only want to quantify over the runtime types. However, the quantification itself happens in the compile time language. So this A is more like an expression of a runtime type. And then it's still the usual identity function but because this is a lifting of something, it's more like an expression, I have to first splice it, and then I have to lift it back again. So here, this kind of demonstrates that we have staging and quotation and splicing for types as well. And we will see later examples when this pattern has to be used. Uh, okay, and I probably, I will skip this, but uh, the point is that this example is only well typed up to the previously mentioned definitional equalities. So here I have that the quotation of this expression has this type, but actually I expect, expect some type of this form. So I have to rely 
on uh, on the rule which says that quotation and splicing are definitional isomorphisms. And sorry, I also mentioned I should mention that splicing binds stronger than anything else. So this is kind of borrowed from the from the meta ML notation of of splicing. And if we do staging here, then we once again just get an ordinary identity function. So here, nothing interesting happened. But if we go to a slightly more complicated example for doing a map function with inlining, then really here we need to use abstraction over runtime types because we want to use runtime lists. And as I mentioned before, the only way to cross between the different stages is to use lifting and splicing and quotation so list zero is the runtime type of lists. It must take a runtime type as an argument so we can only abstract over runtime types like this. And if you look at this definition, there's a bit of a noise, probably I will not explain it in detail. The point is that now we can use uh, this inline map function and if you perform staging, then what we get is essentially this folder zero function and we have inlined the mapping function into this definition. And this looks, uh, this might look a bit noisy with all of these quotations and splices. And actually this is roughly the level of noisiness that you have to uh, contend yourself with if you are using, for example, template Haskell. So template Haskell is also uh, quite noisy, but in this system we can do quite strong inference for quotes and splices. So before looking at this uh, inference, it is worth to note that we have these preservations of types by lifting. So lifting preserves all negative types up to definitional isomorphism. So a lifting of a function is a function of lifted types, uh, is isomorphic definitionally to a function of a lifted, uh, lifted types and the lifting of a sigma. So here this is a notation for a dependent pair type is isomorphic to a dependent pair of list, lifted things. And we can use these properties and we can also use a bidirectional elaboration and, uh, and also the fact that we have stages in universes. So uh, we do not have this in template Haskell that we have already have a separation of different stages in universes. In Haskell, this would look like we have different kinds of runtime and compile time types. But because here we have the stratification, we can use bidirectional elaboration and coercive subtyping to infer pretty much all quotes and spices that we would have to write in programs. So the previous mapping definition can become just like this. And this is also implemented in the artifact demo. Okay, and uh, we can also stage types. So if I have a compile time natural number, so if I have a compile time natural number, I can by induction on that natural number compute a type expression in the runtime language. So here I'm using an Agda like uh, pattern matching notation for doing induction on, on the compile time natural number. And you can see that what happens here is that uh, I'm computing a nested tuple of, of certain length. Uh, sorry, uh, how much time do I have? Three minutes, okay. Okay, so yeah, so if I use induction on, on compile time data, I can compute types and I can also use then dependent elim elimination on compile time data to define dependently typed programs over these computed types. And in this case, in order to define this mapping function, I have to use uh, a dependent elimination on natural numbers. So I think, uh, so, so dependent types in stage compilation are quite compelling because one of the, one of the use cases, one of the important use cases of staging is generic programming. And although in like normal programming, we can uh, get by without dependent types in generic programming, it's quite common that we really need dependent types to make a generic program that type. Okay, and so there are more things. So in the artifact, there is also an implementation of stage folder build fusion and a well type staged uh, STLC interpreter, and also a demonstration of monadic let insertion. And in the paper, there's the formal stuff. So in the paper, staging is evaluation of two level type theory into pre sheaves over the object theory syntax. And correctness of staging is a conservativity property, and the correctness is shown by 
proof relevant logical relations internally to the species over the uh, object level syntactic category. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.